Praise the Lord, dear friend. Thomas Manton the fourth here. Wow. I've been speaking about the power of divine connections, and I want to say, I believe we're in volume four today here, and the one thing you want to know is um, God is first. He's connection number one, numero uno. Er in French, uno in Espanol. Number one, the word holy means one, we're together in our mind, in our thinking, in our carrying on in the things of life. Him and us, together, one. So, I don't think I said that enough. I'm talking about people because I feel this burden about people being connected with the people that they need to be connected with. And of course, we all need people because without people, you can't do anything. Now, by yourself... You can, um, you can think, you can pray, you can hear, you can get the plan, you can get the blueprint of action, all of that, but you cannot implement it without another person. Without another person coming into your world to procreate something you can't. So you without God, forget it. You're missing the whole point. It doesn't matter what you want to embark upon. Someone says, well, people in the world, they uh, they look like they have great stuff going on. Well, yeah, sure, but you know, you don't know the, the, the condition of their soul. And the Bible even says, what, will it gain, what, what, what would it be profitable in to gain the whole world but lose your soul? So you can't, uh, you can't uh, get far with your soul in a bad state. Think about it. You can only go as far as you can go in this life, and then when you depart, young or older in the middle, that's it. I see these uh, ads. Well, no, they're not ads. Posts. You know, like, I mean, like, um, when I say ad, I mean like a posting, you know, of people popping up and they're just dead. Young people, young preachers, people. I know some preachers that were young that I knew dead they were some were involved with things that were, they were doing things that were not right and I think they opened the door to the devil and the devil came for them and they were gone I'm talking about 30 30s in their 30s 30 years old another guy I knew seemed like a nice guy and um, gets killed one day he was begging me to come speak at his church and I just couldn't go. Ruby, hello, dear. Where are you from, Ruby? Can you tell me where you're watching from? Love to connect and talk to you a little bit. So share this broadcast, everybody. I'm just going to deliver the word here and almost to another meeting. So I will talk to you after the broadcast. But let me continue. So I just felt led not to do it. God knew that his life wouldn't be long for whatever reason. I don't know. You know. So, well, these are people that were saved, you know. What about people in the world that are not? So, your number one connection is with God. Please understand that. But then you need people to procreate. So you get the vision from him. He uh, it initiates it and activates it, but you implement it with other people so you're no good by yourself no one's an island remember that no man is an island no woman is an island you can't just well i gotta be by myself well there's a woundedness there or you just had a lot of bad people around you you could be super strong but you've had wrong people so you're very reluctant about people i think that's a good thing because you don't want the wrong people in your world they're not going to help you they're going to hurt you you've been hurt before you've been your time has been wasted before you've been ripped off before You've had all kinds of no you've had all kinds of nonsense go on before, so you don't need any more of that nonsense, drama, rubbish, thievery. You know, some people are just not good, and God sometimes does us a favor to chase the wrong people out of our world. I heard the Lord say in a very small whisper, somebody that I was trying to work with, and and it just was seemed okay, but then it didn't seem so okay, and then the Lord whispered to me, I. I chased them. 
I thought, ooh, boy. And you know us, you know humans, we try to return a call, you know, to be polite, you know, call back. And then you see, it just it's just like that. It's just stuck. And I, th I remember what the Lord said. So I said, you know what? I made a, a final decision. What, is that your final answer? Remember that? Yes, my final answer is canceled. Because there's something wrong there. It's not good. Now, God is the one who's a battle axe to your enemies. He will smite them and wipe them out. Don't ever play with God. Because he's the wrong one to play with. I'm telling you right now. Don't play with an anointed vessel like myself. Psalm 105.15 says, Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Don't do it. Matthew 10.41 says it in a positive way. Bless a prophet. He'll bless you. You'll have a prophet's reward when you're good to the prophet. When you're bad to the prophet, destruction can come. A prophet could be indicative of someone that's anointed. Could be a pastor, an evangelist, a very good, righteous, vibrant, innocent, well-meaning, glorious person filled with the glory of God. Don't play with them. Do not. So here's a promise from Isaiah 41. My eyes fell upon this. Isaiah 41 and verse 8. You're my servant whom I've chosen. Now I'm skipping past the Jacob, Abraham, Israel, and some of the places because this was in context here. All right? In that time. So let me just bring it to the current level now. You are my servant whom I've chosen. And I've taken you from far places, farthest regions. You're my servant whom I've chosen. Don't be afraid, for I'm with you. Don't ever be dismayed, for I'm your God. I will strengthen you and help you and uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, a lot of people stop there and they forget to read verse 11. These religious people that can't even read the whole thing right. Let, when there's a sword coming in the scripture against enemies, don't be like, oh, maybe that will offend somebody. Oh, it's too strong. Jesus, people out there rioting, destroying things, and, and anybody that's playing the news has to bleep out everything. It's just the way people talk. And this is the, the language in the street, yeah? Now, we don't talk like that, but hey, you know, don't be afraid to have a sharp edge on you and tell it right, tell the truth. Um, say amen, somebody. That's good preaching. Verse 11, Isaiah 43, no, 41. Isaiah 41, verse 11. Behold, all those who were against you, they shall be ashamed and disgraced. They shall become and be as nothing. And those who strive with you will perish. You'll seek them, you'll look for them and not find them. Those who contended with you or with me. Hello. Those that contended with you and those who warred against, war against you, Isaiah 41, 12, shall be as nothing. There will be a non-existent thing. Again here, verse 13, for I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand. Oh, Lord, here's my right hand. Hold it. Saying to you, fear not, I will help you. <laughs> I'll make you a... Here it is. First, let me jump to verse 15. No. Can I read this? Right? 12, 13, 14, 15. Behold, I will make you a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. I'll make you a threshing instrument with sharp teeth. And you shall thresh the mountains and beat them small. You know, mountains of what? Mountains of evil. Not a physical rock. What are you going to go? Chew on a rock with your sharp teeth if you have sharp teeth? And like, you know, that's stupid. What? Are, this is symbolic of something here. All right. And you'll make the hills like chaff. You know, those things that like are erecting themselves against the, the, the right ways of God. You'll, you'll break them. And God even says, I'll begin to bless you. I'll open rivers in desolate heights, fountains in the midst of the valleys. That's verse 18. Isaiah 41, 18. And I'll make the wilderness a pool of water. I'll make the dry land springs of water, filled with springs of water. Uh, 19. 
Isaiah 41, 19. I will plant in the wilderness the cedars and the acacia trees and the myrtle trees and the oil tree oil trees. Wow. And I will set the desert in the cypress tree and the pine trees and the the box trees and all these beautiful things. The hand of the Lord will do it. And I, the Holy One of Israel, has created all of this for you and for me. Read on, present your case and bring forth strong reasons, says the, the King of Jacob. King of Israel, our King, Jesus. And, let it, and you'll show us what things that will happen and you'll show us the former things as we consider them, what, what they were all about, and we'll know the latter end of them. Well, this is prophetic now, we'll know. All these promises are in here when you connect with God. So the divine connection, number one, is you with God. Isaiah 42, verse 14. I'll cry like a woman, like a woman in labor, and I'll lay waste mountains and hills of the things. This is, again, the Lord, and, and I'll make the crooked places straight. This is the Lord again coming to set things in order correctly. Hello. You need to understand that God is bigger than any obstacle you've faced, any problem you've had, anything that has afflicted you, any person that was wrong. And then now you need to get yourself together with him. And then after that, now we can move on into the realm of having great things with great people. I find that that's why the Holy Ghost... I believe started to have me teach on this a couple of days back because a lot of people are lacking the right people, the right environment, the right situations in conjunction and in cahoots with, or as a funny word, or like in conglomeration with building with the right people and you can't get enough done. Wrong people will waste your time. Let me tell you something, an uncaring person, a disinterested person in your world does not belong in your world. They belong to be put outside your world. Someone that's disinterested, just acting like they're okay, hanging on, they don't give, they don't present, they're not resourceful, they don't make your life and world a better place. They know what you need because you've said it a hundred times, but they don't care at all. They just want to get by, get theirs, and you know what I mean? And whatever, and they don't care about anything else. They are not qualified for relationship with you or to be in your world. They're not a true divine connection. They're just there. They're, you know, you think they're okay, so you tolerate them. But really, when you tolerate something, you're missing out on the bigger thing that God has with somebody else and other people. Somebody could get done in one day what someone else couldn't do in a year. Let me prophesy right now. Let me tell you this prophetically. Somebody could get done in a few hours and just absolutely blow your mind because the people you've had around... They do so little, such a low percentage of what you've asked for, the instructions you've given, the desires that you've uh, uh, said, you know, things you wanted to see happen and done. And, and, uh, oh, and here comes somebody and just like in a day, half a day, short time, they could just move like that. And you keep making notes for yourself. I do this too. You keep making notes for yourself of things you want. <laughs> Things you want to have, things you want to do, things you want to get, things you want to buy. You see some, ooh, I need that, ooh, I need that. And what do you do? You keep making notes, 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 but that list gets very long of a, of a to-do list or an action list, and it, it never gets, like, done. But I, I want to prophesy, and I feel this anointing. I'm standing, I'm here on the earth, bringing this from heaven on earth. Uh, uh, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. I want to say that God is going to arrange to bring the people that we need and want that will absolutely just get all of those things and just chop away at those lists, light them, done, and move to the next thing and be able to, pro to create and procreate. They're interested. They're on fire. The Let me say it again. The uncaring and the disinterested person has to be removed from your world if you want to really succeed. So, funny enough, we have many people that are meaning well, but they don't have enough skill, so you're burdened about that. Then you have someone that has skill, but then their heart is not so in it. You know, like if you're a preacher, don't put up with people from uh, 
you know, all the other ways of life, and they're just like two timing you, and they're with other people, and they're doing get no, that's not okay. Get people that could be dipped into what you're doing, and like you're doing things together, and you're getting things done. You want to build a ministry? You have to focus on it. I had an interesting day. I felt very feisty the last few hours. I'm just riled up. I'm just fired up. I'm telling you, I'm just like, you know, feeling like I look at something. I'm like, no, that's a waste of time. I look at something. I don't care. Why should I care? You have to be like that. Let me tell you something. Any great man that you see that's achieved a lot, even a preacher who's anointed, even a holy man of God who, uh, is, you know, you look up to so highly, but let me tell you, in his work life, he's militant about his focus. I'm writing a book, one or one book I know, and probably be the, probably, I'm trying to say, there'll probably be, you know, I'm tripping on the word because it's not even the right word to say. Take it out. Okay. I'm not talking to edit it. I'm just saying to myself, forget it, skip. Let me not use the word because it's not the right word to say. It will happen, not probably. So I know I have two books about the subject of focus, okay? I'm not going to give you the titles away. I'm not going to give the titles away right now, but they're in the process of being written. One of them will get done, and another one, I see another one with some different emphasis is about the subject of focus. You only achieve greatly when you get a single focus on something that you need to be doing that is vital for you to get done and you just like get you feel like you don't have time for all the other stuff do what interests you you know something you love you also have to be have a little bit of um, discipline self-discipline on how you use your time as far as um not getting too carried away with things that are you, you feel passionate about, but don't let it take your time from your work. Your work also shouldn't be boring. It shouldn't be boring to you. It should be exciting to you. You should love to want to do it. I mean, that, that's when you get good things done. When you feel like, I love doing this. It's not a chore. It's not a bother. You know, the Lord told me to do these broadcasts. I see a lot of people come on. They say a lot of things. and They want to say they're a preacher and they want to have a ministry. And that's fine whatever live and let live it's a big world but to have the cutting edge message that'll change someone's life that's an anointing from heaven it's upon me and i'm telling you i i, I when i'm in this time right now i'm just like wow this is phenomenal nothing else i'd rather do at the moment my mind is not thinking about somewhere else i would like to be or no but there's a lot of work to be done so you need the people to help you even in your personal life, hey, look, you might have a job. Nobody can go to work with you because you're the one that's employed. But then you leave the office time and then you or work time, wherever you're doing. And you go home, you have to have a good family, a good house, a good environment. So you got to be with the right people. Now, if you married a person that uh, has become it's become a tormenting situation, then that's a problem. We see a lot of politicians that people voted in that are absolute devils from hell. Like in Seattle, in uh, Michigan, and New York, and California, and places like that. Mike, Chicago, Jesus in heaven, demons. I mean, demonic creatures, like aliens from the hell, from the the, the underworld, coming up on Earth to do all their garbage. You know, but people voted for them, so now they have to figure out how to vote them out. But a marriage relationship is another thing. I don't want to take any time to talk about that too much. But uh, You said I do. It's hard to say I don't. So you got to work it out. So people that are going to get hooked up in a relationship, you better know it's the right one. That brings you joy. And it's also you're also equally yoked according to the purpose of God. Your business connections and relationships need to be equally yoked. Someone says, well, what if I trust someone and they... Well, people are crazy in this world. You know, nothing is like uh, absolutely you know the end from the beginning in every detail. It's a journey. But there are principles to use. But look for the signs of people that could be connected with you and people that should not be connected with you. 
But I want to tell you again, you need the right people to succeed in the mission and call that God's given you to, to perform and to do. And I want to pray right now as we're about to go out. I'll, I'll be back here tomorrow but about the same time or a few minutes earlier. The Lord is going to absolutely revolutionize your world by bringing you into divine connections, divine relationships, more of those, the right ones, the good ones, and you're going to begin to see the hand of, of God coming upon people to connect with you. And they're going to do you well and you're going to do them well and things are going to get done. Can you receive that as the word of the Lord? Just say amen or write amen on here somewhere in your comments. I'm not seeing the comments. I'll interact with everybody later. Please hit the share button. Share this with other people. They need to hear this. The few uh, volumes I did before this, I think this is volume four today, entitled The Power of Divine Connections. I am Thomas Manton IV, a servant of, of God, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, his hand is upon my life. I think you can see that's very evident. Now, I have... A book that I want to send to our partners, The Benefits of Excellence as an ebook or The Laws of Success as an ebook. And you can WhatsApp me, you can private message me when you're sowing any seed into the ministry. That's your gift into the work of God. I want to send that as my thank you gift back to you uh, for, for doing that. Now I had a I had an open vision some days ago, and I saw the number seven and the number seven, like two clouds, come together. And Revelation 5.12, that talks about the attributes of, of, of Jesus. Full of power, full of riches, full of wisdom, full of blessing, full of glory, full of honor for the purpose of dominion. He had all of that. And then I saw the person standing, needing perfection, desiring perfection. And they came together like this, boom, and there was an explosive result of blessing for success in the lives of people. I came out of the vision, I was like astounded. I was crying, I said, I was so shaken. I said, Lord, this is amazing. And I had another open vision. I saw the Lord Jesus with the crown on his head and jewels were pouring down. I'll share that in, the, in another broadcast. But uh, pro I, hope, I hope, maybe I'll maybe I'll talk about it tomorrow. So if you join me tomorrow, I'll try. If, if the Lord has me, you know, Allows me to do that. But there's such a... Man, I feel the anointing when I talk about it. And jewels, diamonds, rubies, emeralds, sapphires, beautiful, precious stones. Not the semi-precious stones. The valuable ones that people make, you know, rings and jewelry out of. And the, the, the expensive. And were pouring down. And I was catching them in bags, my pockets, my life. They were pouring down upon me. And I, it's just a thing about the anointing of, 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 of his blessing for, for great wealth and treasure coming and it's like an anointing upon our ministry for that for people to get blessed financially i want to tell you that you need finances to flow in your life you need to connect and you need to sow a seed in this regard so i started to do it i said they came together seven seven so when i came out of the vision i thought seven seven and seven seventy seven wow what does it mean so the first instantly i knew the lord was giving me the thought but myself i figured it out i'm brilliant you know, if you're smart, use your smarts, use your brilliance to do something. And and I just saw 77. I said, Lord, I'm making that a seed. Can I sow that? He's like, yes, I mean, that way. come on. So I, I sowed that and I sowed it again and I sowed it again and I sowed it again and I, I'm doing it. And the Lord began to open up the floodgates of blessings to me in, in a greater way. I'm telling you, you know, it's always flowing with me, but... It's something began to happen within 24 hours. Major miracles began. To, things came into my hands. I, can, I, I can't tell the details, but it's it's massive. And I was like, "Wow, Lord, this is this is amazing." So he said, "Well, give the people a chance to do it." So, seventy-seven dollars or equivalent of that in your currency, in Kenya shillings, it would be seventy-seven hundred. Or. 77 euros, 77 pounds, 77 dollars, whatever, however you would work that out. You need to sow that. And when you do, I'm sending you a love gift. You tell me which book you'd like, The Laws of Success or The Benefits of Excellence. These are 
my gifts to my partners. I'm not presenting a book, promoting a book, launching a book. These are, we've already printed thousands of these and they've all sold. They're all gone. I have probably the two, two of the last copies or a few copies we have. Uh, and, 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 um, you know, I want to, I, I, I decided to give these as a gift to my partners. Okay. When you're sowing a seed, let me know which one you'd like and do that. In Jesus' name. The information will be in the heading of the title and also in the comments of how you can sell, ways you can sell. All the details will be there. And take advantage of that. M Pesa in Kenya, Cash App, and PayPal internationally, Cash App USA, or wherever you can do it from. It does work internationally. And the website, thomasmanton.com, all the ways are there. And you can sow that seed. I'm going to be praying for you. Please write me your prayer requests. Write me your prayer requests. What's going on in your life. What you'd like to see happening. And I'm going to pray for many specific harvests to come to you. That are sowing this seed. And please do whatever God tells you. Whatever it is God tells you. If it's a different amount or it's more. or it's a, Obey the Holy Spirit. But you need to tap the grace. There's a grace. An opportunity for finances to begin to flow. I mean, it's it's happening for me. I've seen it. It's happening for other people. Uh, we have people that have become millionaires under this anointing. And I don't have time to talk about that now, but I will. Glorious lives. People that came from nothing. And now they're walking in, having several companies, living in palatial houses, living in beautiful places. And that's not how they grew up. They tapped the grace of heaven. It's upon flowing on the earth through us. Here it is. Father, I thank you for a wind of favor that's going to blow upon your sons and daughters, that they'll have what they need financially, economically, but also relationally. And of course, first and paramount is their connection with you and a fresh touch from you today in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, pour your presence out upon my friend right now, my partner one of our members, our people. And if you're just coming to join us for the first time, welcome in. Welcome. Karibu in Swahili means welcome. Twanani Kesho means see you tomorrow in Swahili. Akuna Matata, you don't have any problems because God's taking you to the top. Amen. And I'm praying the blessings of heaven be upon you. In Jesus' name. Thomas Matthew the Fourth, I'm going to keep praying for you. Please write me. Don't be out of sight, out of mind. Let me see you. 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 And the Lord will do something great for you. In Jesus' name. We'll see you again here tomorrow. In Jesus' name. Love you much.